whenever you're ready. All right. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Sarabudin. Thank you, Dr. Wan. So, uh, first of all, let me share my screen. So, can everyone see my screen now? Yeah, it's very clear, Dr. Chong. Good. Okay. So, uh, first of all, welcome. So, as mentioned by Dr. Wan, this is uh, CBD's online webinar uh, organized by UPM. So, today, title will be Effective Remote Teaching with Google uh, Meet and Google Chrome Extensions. And this is a webinar organized by Center of Economic Development and also Teaching and Learning Innovation Committee, UPM. So, my name is Chong. You can get, call me Chong or CM. I'm from uh, Faculty of Agriculture, UPM. So uh, lastly, before I start my step-by-step uh, step step demonstrations, uh, I'd like to uh, introduce you a little bit about the learning outcome of today's webinar. So uh, overall goal will be to demonstrate how to conduct a online teaching using Google Meet and also Google, uh, Google Chrome extensions. Further divided into several objectives, the first one will be to create uh, a video conference using Google Meet. As you know, uh, we are a lot of us still using Zoom, um, but more and more people worry about the safety issues, safety concerns of Zoom. So, uh, so that's why CAT uh, provide alternative. So we have an online tutorial on how to use Google Meet. Uh, we go beyond Google Meet later. So we will explore Google Chrome extension because there's so many exciting Google Chrome extension out there that can enhance your teaching and learning. That will be our second objective of the day. So the third objective will be to provide, uh, how do you gamify the online learnings? So the flow of the webinar will be, uh, after this uh, PowerPoint slide, we'll go straight to step-by-step -step tutorial. So we will start with Google Meet first. So for those that do not want to install any software, Google Meet will be the good options. So I will start uh, our section with Google Meet, how to setting, setting up, how to, how to set it up and how to screen sharing, cross uh, captions, recordings. And we move further to uh, advanced course, uh, which is uh, how to use web tools and Google extension to gamify your online learnings, uh, readings, uh, article sharing, and so on. And after that, I would like to introduce you another web tools, Peer Dex, where you actually can interact with your student real time when you're presenting your PowerPoint and follow by wrapping up. So uh, before that, I would like to remind you, Google Meet is a feature uh, only enjoyed by those users that subscribe to G Suite. So for UPM and a lot of primary school and secondary schools, uh, they have the uh, Google uh, Suite for Education, so you have no problems to 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 access Google Meet. But however, if you do not have G Suite, if your institute do not subscribe to the G Suite Educations, you can join the meeting, but you can't initiate the meetings. Right. Uh, additional tips before I begin my presentations, I would prefer uh, if you want to do follow my step-by-step step step tutorials, uh, perhaps you can create a, you can create a, a split windows. Uh, for PC, you can use a window shortcut key, window and left or right arrow to adjust your screen. So here you can put your YouTube or your or you're watching from Zoom, so you can put on the left and then you can open a Google Chrome browser on the right. Okay, for uh, Macs, uh, you can uh, click the green buttons to do so. But however, um, you can use uh, additional device to achieve this. And But if you just want to watch the tutorial, it's okay. You can always come back to the YouTube uh, video that Kat going to post on their channels uh, to know the tutorials. So without further ado, I would like to start uh, today's uh, tutorials. Okay, let me close the PowerPoint to um, reduce the bandwidth. So right, right here, I would like to start with Google Meet. So how, where do you, uh, how can you 
find Google Meet on your Google Chrome browser. Google Chrome browsers, after you sign in with your account that subscribe to the G Suite package, here under the Google Apps, you can find the Google Meet. By clicking on this button, they will direct you to the Google Meet. However, if you can't find the apps uh, icons, you feel free to type meet.google.com. They can direct you to join and or start a meeting. Bear in mind, you need to sign in with your account that subscribe to G Suite again. But if you do not have the account that subscribe to G Suite, I would like to show you how they look like. So this browser here is a account that not belongs to UPM ID. Say I'm going to log in in Google Meet. So I can type in the address. So if your accounts do not subscribe uh, to any G Suite package, you only can use a meeting code. That means you only can join a Google Meet meeting. You cannot initiate anything. Uh, so even though you signed it, signed, signing in. So back to this one, I already signed in with the account. So the first step uh, you can guess is to join or start a meeting. So a notification will prompt out to ask you to give a nickname to your Google Meet uh, chat room. So you, I would like to recommend you to give a nickname because if you share to any of your colleagues under the same domain, for example, I'm using upn.edu.my, I share the code to all the user of upn.edu.my, they can just type in the nickname that I set now. So they do not need to key in the wrong code. So for today's demonstration purpose, I would like to blendedly uh, give a name. So after you give a nickname, press for your class, you can key in your course name. So you're being read to this, uh, like, uh, this uh, page. So here is a preview of your audios and your video qualities. So as you can see on the screen, the camera failed. It wouldn't happen for your case. Why? Because I'm using Zoom now. So my cameras already occupied for Zooms. So uh, the Chrome prevented uh, multi multiple use of the cameras. So the camera will fail here. But in your case, uh, the camera will function, uh, still functioning. You can feel free to turn off if you do not want to show your face and click on and off the microphones. And since you are going to give online lecture, so you're going to turn on the mic. So the small icon here is to indicate uh, your microphones working or not. So you can see the when your microphone is functioning well, so you can see the icons have the wave waving uh, changes. So under this three dot, which is more options, when you create uh, captions, I will tell you further later. You can go to setting. Setting here to set which microphones, which speakers, which camera that you want to use, and the the resolutions set to do not set to high definition because it's going to take up all the bandwidth. 360 is, uh, is fine. So you can feel free to click join now. But before that, let me tell you there's more options. Um, join and use your phone for audio. If let's say you do not have a good microphone that you want to use your uh, phone device as a microphone, you can call them. So this is a number that you can call and then you present your screen and then you can record uh, your dialing with your phone. However, it's going to take additional charge by your mobile data service providers. You can click call me, means that Google can call you. However, these functions right now only available for Canada and United States. So for us, just make sure you have a good microphone, a built-in one or a, a microphone, a USB one then you can go ahead, click join now. So when you click join now, there will be a message point out uh, a joining info. 
but I want to remind you if you if this is the first time you log into Google Meet, they have more message uh, will be pointing out. For example, they will ask whether they can access your camera, whether this site can access your microphones. So you need to create a lot. Since I already allowed before, so there, there won't be any problems. Uh, the message won't be appear anymore. However, if you, you haven't allowed before, uh, there will be a, 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 a message notification to ask your permission to use your camera, to use your microphone. Okay, so let's back to the joining info. This joining info, is a joining info that you want to share with your students. You want to copy this joining info and share to your student under different platforms. You can share through WhatsApp, share through emails, LMS, Putra Plus, Google Class, uh, Google Classroom. Up to you, you can share the joining info by clicking joining info here. And let's say I take a brand, when you paste, this is what going to appear. So they will, this is the message and you can paste and share on your emails on WhatsApp and so on. So the student need to key in this code. This code, uh, because the student is not using, uh, if the student using the account different that, than UPM domains, they need to key in the code. If not, they can just key in the nickname I said just now. And you please ignore this one. This one is for dialing in. Okay, so the code will be this one. Okay, so you can remind students by sharing this code for them after they key in the Google Meet. Okay, so let's move on. So once your students joining, as you can see on the screen, I have one student, Shuhada, to join. Uh, the, the groups. So there's, there's a message uh, notified you to ask the permission whether you want to allow her or him uh, to join. Then you click admit. So your students are start to joining, start to join the, meet, uh, the meeting. So I would like to give a, a tips here. Please set your Google Meet uh, earlier so that you allow all the students to log in. If not, the notifications is going to in, uh, interrupt the, your online teaching. All right. Just in case you accidentally click on any regions of the page and the joining info disappear, and you, yet you still want to share the joining info with some students. Okay, thanks. Uh, okay. So just in case you want to join, uh, just in case you want to share the joining info again, feel free to click on this button. You can retrieve all the joining info again. Okay, thanks for those that already joined my groups. So we have Shreda and so on. So on, on, if you click here, you can see all the lists. And if you click chat, you can chat with them just by the functions of Zoom. But I would like to introduce more of uh, uh, additional features here. So turn on question. If you can see at the bottom here, when you turn on the captions, they will generate a closed captions. So this closed captions uh, is to translate my speech into uh, words. However, sometimes it's inaccurate, just like what on the YouTube. So you can turn it on or turn it off. And there's actually one Google extension where you can install. When you turn on your captions, every dialogue in the Google Meet will be written into script. However, I'm not going to introduce you the Google as that Google extension yet, uh, because today we're going to focus on education purposes. Right. Before I start my presentations, uh, I would like to tell you extra functions. There's more options here, the three dot uh, icon. When you click, you can see there's a several options. 
setting is to adjust your microphone like just now you did before you enter links the, the room. Change layouts is to change how the interface look like. So by default, it's auto, means whoever's on their mic, whoever's speaking right now, the screen will feature links him or her. So I uh, would like to tell you a, a premium features of uh, Google Chrome where we can you enjoy these premium features until 30th of September. You can record your meetings and then remember when you click recording your meeting, you ask permissions because it is illegal if your audience do not know you are recording uh, the, the conference uh, call. So after you ask permission from your student, you can create a set. So you start to record it. So on the top left corner here, you can see the recording uh, icons buffer link to tell you uh, the Google Meet initiate the, the recording. When the icon turn into red color, it signifies that you are, do, you are doing the recording right now. Okay, so you can go ahead and present your screen because right now students are listening to your, your, your speech, your conversation, your, and also your face uh, by your front camera. But you want to present your uh, teaching slide. So, Go here to the present now. So if you accidentally create any regions on the layout, don't worry. You just bring your mouse down here so they'll appear again and click present now. To present your screen, there's two options. One is to present your entire screen or a particular window. So for our case, it's going to be entire screens. So when you click on entire screens, there's once a uh, safety message appear by Chrome. Chrome browser will ask you whether uh, there's one software accessing your screen uh, sharing right now. Are you allow it? So you need to click on a small image here and click share. So why we have to do this? This is uh, for, for example, if you have more than one uh, screen, you connect uh, the, your PC to projector or second desktop and so on. There's a multiple screen available that you need to pick which one that you want to share. So for my case, it's only one screen. So I highlight it and I click share. By sharing, the Google Meet start to presenting your screen. So you can see you are presenting to everyone. Bear in mind right now, you're sharing your entire screen to your class from here to the entire screen. So you can go ahead, present your PowerPoint if you are using PowerPoint, and then you can carry out your lessons like usual. Okay, so this is a, a very simple step. So I'd like to recap. So this is the front, uh, the initial. Uh, part the basics uh, uh, tutorial. We're going to go to all the advanced features later. Okay, so recap. Go to meet.google.com. Put a uh, click on join. Uh, create the meetings. Put down the nickname and click join now. Sharing your joining info to your students. Allow your student to enter, and then click on uh, uh, present now. If you have done your presentation, you can stop presenting. And then if your students want to present their screen, you need to stop your present screen presentation to allow them. Okay, however, in case of students that uh, who forget to mute their mic, you can mute for them. However, for currently my students are muting her mic, but in case she did not, uh, uh, she does not mute her mic, you can mute for her. And I want to remind you, you can mute all the audience manually. However, you cannot unmute them. It's up to them to unmute themselves if they want to voice out anything because it's against privacy to control people's microphones. 
So you can unmute, you can mute them, but you cannot unmute them. Okay. So if a particular student forget to switch off their mic, you can turn off for them. And if you want them to, to, to ask questions, you, unmute, uh, you cannot unmute for them. You just remind them they have to click on the unmute button. And you can remove the students. You can remove the students uh, by clicking the screen, uh, remove. Right, after you've done all your presentations, you can stop record your videos, click on stop recording. So click on stop recording. Recording is extra functions, okay? So the recording will be saved to Google Drive and at the same time, they will CC a copy to your emails. Okay, recording is not, not necessarily, but if you want to save for, to, for, um, to upload onto YouTube or you want to show, share on, like you break them into a by side videos and share on, on WhatsApp. And perhaps not every student have good internet access. You want to share or break down all the section into small video, share to them. So they take their times to download. So after you're done, you can leave the group. But I want to remind you, clicking this button, leave the call. But there's other audience still inside the call. They will automatically become the host. So you are not longer the host. If you want to rejoin back, you need to get permission from them. They have the right to mute you or remove you if they are, they are the host. So my advice is to ask them to leave before you or else you remove them manually. So Shada, sorry, I remove you for the timing. Then only let you leave the groups. Okay, so this is the basics uh, tutorials. Before we move to the advanced features, uh, we can entertain uh, several questions. Right. Uh, is there any questions? Yeah, there are a few questions here. One is, um, uh, question is, is there um, any maximum time for video recording? Video recordings, uh, if not mistaken, is more than two hours. Uh, I can get back to you. Uh, Salah, you can help me to search. Okay. Yeah, sure. And so that, oh, yeah. And also does Google Meet has any time limit for a session? Yes, but uh, it's about 48 hours. Uh, about, uh, hold on. So uh, for 40 minutes for uh, recordings. Okay, but that one is for trial periods. So if you are doing premiums, I mean, 30, until 30 September, you can more than 40 minutes. But if you're using trial features, uh, after the 30 September, it's only 40 minute recordings. But for Google Meet, uh, you can have more than uh, two, two hours, uh, more than 48 hours of uh, meetings. Okay. okay. All right. Uh, there's another question on the limits of users. How many users can attend at once? 200. Ah. Yeah, they increase okay. to 200. From 100 to 200, sorry. Uh, Labor confirmed it because uh, this Google Meets have like, there, there's a lot of new update recently. Mm -hmm. Last week, they changed hands out Meet to Google Meet uh, officially. And they have increased few features and also security functions. So they might have a, might, might have difference. Um, so let me do a quick check. So should be 200. So it's okay for the classroom setting. Um, another question? question, yeah. Uh, can you show us again? There's one question here. Um, uh, uh, the, uh, the recording option, uh, if you are doing, for example, a live session, how do you record your live session? Uh, I want to correct, it's about 250. Okay, for live sessions, 
you can do that uh, if you use the premium package. So for education package right now is for you to record down, uh, record down your video and then uh, they will send to your Google Drive. Um, if you're using the premium versions, um, you can actually go to admin.google.com to, to do the live stream. But uh, it's because our package right here is G Suite Education, so we don't have that uh, link to YouTube. Uh, although Google Meet do have that functions. Okay, so I think I will, I will come back to this Google Meet again, but I would like to introduce you more functions Okay, so Asala, please allow me to continue. Sure. Okay, so so I have already done with the Google Meet. So let's meet. Uh, let's go to uh, advanced tips. How about uh, attendance and also uh, interaction with students? So uh, these are the things that I I want I plan to do today. A few Google Chrome extension and so on. But we start with Google Meet attendance and also not. So this is what we call Google Chrome extension. So what is Google Chrome extension? Google Chrome extension is an add-on to your browser, your Chrome browsers, and to enhance your browsing experience. Each, each Google Chrome's uh, extension have their own functions. So I would like to share with you some of the very, very good uh, Google Chrome extension. So we start with the light one first, and then we'll go to more and more advanced. So the first Google Chrome extension, okay, if you want to ask me why Google Chrome, uh, because you, of course you can use uh, um, Firefox and IE, they have their own extension and add-on. But right now, because uh, judging from the popular usage of Chrome's in Malaysia, so I stick with Chrome's uh, because some extensions appears on multiple platforms, some only exclusive on certain browsers. So today I'm going to focus on Google Chrome extensions. So let's start with a few things first. So you type Google Meet attendance on the searching engine. So this one, if you can see, let me do it. Yeah. So you click on that, they will bring you to a meet attendance. Remember, there are few meet attendance that you can install. I would recommend this one with an icon of Apple. So you click add to Chrome. Then there's a, a message will ask you whether you want to add to your Chrome. Then you click add extension. Right. All right, uh, can we have the participant to mute the mic? Thanks. Okay, so uh, we go further to, uh, after you add to your Chrome's, there's a small icon here, a uh, meet attendance. This meet to signify you, you already installed a uh, extension. So the first Chrome extension I recommend is meet attendance. And what's the function? I will tell you later. So. I'll go on and tell you another function. It's called not Google Meet. So you can see on here, this is the two extensions for Google Meet that you can add to your, your uh, to enhance your Google Meet video conference experience. Add to, again, click add to Chrome and add extensions. So they will install, once they install, you can see the toolbar here, there will be the icons of each extensions. I would recommend you to reboot your Chrome's and then after you install this extension, so let me tell you how, what, what can they help you on Meet. So it, let's say I'm initiating another meeting. So let me recap what I do just now. So af, before install and after install, what's the difference? So let's say I have this one. So uh, this time I skip the nickname. So I join, I creating another Google, uh, Google Meet meeting conference. I click on join now. So again, the joining info I copy. So I want my student to join. So please allow me to share this joining info again. So Shuhada can join my meeting. So Shuhada, this is the course. So can you see? Okay. 
So I hope Shiva can join the meetings. Okay, uh, the code is gcz-mdze-mfs. Okay, uh, it's going to take a while, but my, stu my student is joining. So once she's joining again, there's a message will pop out whether you allow her to, to uh, allow her or him to join, you click admit. So now let me tell you, after you install the extension, what's the difference? So once all the students are here, you can see that the, there are additional icons here. So these icons, when you, when you uh, host over, you can see mouse over it, you can see there's a button here for you to enable and disable. I will recommend you to enable it and then click here. So again, I repeat, mouse over to the icons of attendance, enable it, and then click on the icon uh, on attendance again. So there's a Google's, uh, Google's uh, attendance will be generated. So hold on, let me do it again. So it's going to take a while. It's still loading. Okay, just in case, uh, this is for you to download the attendance. However, um, I don't see it's loading, but don't worry. Uh, okay, please bear with me. I'm troubleshooting. So by right, uh, maybe perhaps I uh this okay let me restart the zoom yeah okay click on here it's okay it's not appealing on my screen, but don't worry, I will go to another uh, Google Meet attendance because this morning we checked two Google Meet attendance. One of them is not functioning and this one is still okay. But right now when I do this, nothing happens. But we move to not, okay? We get back to the Google uh, attendance later. Uh, for Google, for Google Notes, is to uh, is for students to give response. So since since uh, if you're clicking icon of raising hands here, there's a message to tell you that someone raised their hands. So this is good when you present your slide, you have no time to check the chat rooms, and since you mute your students, you can you do not know whether they have questions or not. So if they install Google Notes and they want to ask questions when you're presenting, for example, Shuada, can you raise your hands? Right, so I have uh, my students to, to raise the hands. So when she clicking on raising hands, so I will be notified a message. So you can see here, my student Shuada raised uh, her hand. So I can entertain, I will stop my presentation and entertain. So this function is similar to Zoom. Zoom is premium functions of Zoom have everything, but Google Meet have actually have all the function, but you need to add all the extensions. So that is the difference. However, Google Zoom's uh, Google Meet right now is relatively safe. Okay. So I would like to end this call. The Google attendance uh, have some problems. Uh, by right, they will tell you which time, which student entering. Perhaps I have a uh, less student now, so it's not functioning. But okay, uh, let's move on to the next one. Will be read and write. Okay, so read and write is a accidents 
extension tools that I want to introduce you. So what is the function of read and write? So again, like usual, you go to Chrome Web Store, add to your Chrome, allow it, add your extensions, then you create the icon here. So this, this web tools are very, very good. Uh, let me reboot it. So they'll point a message. You want to use which account to log in your read and write. So I will, I will use my uh, UPM mails. So let's say you are sharing your screen. You are actually uh, want to read some article with your student, for example, these articles. However, most of the times, a particular website has so many advertisements, so many sidebars and so on that distracts your article sharing. So by clicking the icon here, you can call out all these read and write uh, toolbars. So you, you can click on simplified page. So they remove all the advertisements and bring you to another tab that you can actually focus. So uh, let me record the function of Zoom. So let me bring this, okay. So there's few more exciting features here. One is you can, for example, if you worry students have a certain, maybe their grammar, they, they wouldn't be able to understand certain words. You can create, highlight the words and create dictionaries, and then they can tell you the meanings. But the more exciting is you highlight all the terms that you believe your students uh, might not uh, understand the meanings. For example, let me let me lend them a bit fields. So you color them and click on this button. So they will generate a vocabulary onto your Google Drive. They'll ask which account you want to upload the Google Drive, then you allow them. So they will bring you to the Google Drive, uh, you create a, accounts, listing all your terms that you highlight with, uh, with, with meanings. So they will create the files, so you can see they will automatically direct you to your Google Drive. Sorry, I have created multiple times. So you can see there's a correction of your uh, vocabulary that you want the student to understand the meanings and then the symbol to improve the understanding. It's extremely useful when you share uh, share articles. Um, I'm not sure others faculties, for my faculty students have poor linguistics uh, capabilities. So from time to time, it actually, um, with all these additional features, you can actually enhance their understanding and you can compile all these terms. And for, as a researcher, when you're reading journals, you can also correct uh, uh, correct certain terms that you believe you are not really understand the meanings. Another function here is to screen mask it by clicking the screen mask icon, and then you can adjust uh, the opacities whether you want to be very very uh, high opacity and also the length, so that when you share your screen, student can zoom to focus on this particular region. And there's many functions in read and write. I'm not going to go further, including they can read out for you when you highlight a particular uh, paragraph. Okay, so we're done with read and write. It's maybe a little bit overwhelming. I'm going to introduce you so many extensions because I'm very excited to know all these extensions and it's actually helping my classes and my uh, browsing experience. So um, I'm going to share you a few more, please bear with me. But uh, you can always go back to the YouTube videos and then recap back to what I have taught you. All right, so let's move to, okay, we have done this one. Let's move to FreePT. FreePT is really exciting. Everything is very exciting for me. So what you need to go is a web tools. You go to freept.net. FreePT is a gamification tool. You can do a gamification with your class. So you can see here, there's so many, many uh, options here. I only pick three for you. So I tag uh, here is the FreePT random name pickers. It's actually uh, for you to pick a student. 
so you can you can you can you can rotate the wheels and then pick they will randomly pick a name for you or you can form a team of three team of two team three team and so on so how do you use this okay so let me introduce you okay go to flippity.net go to templates click on templates they'll bring you to a google drive document click make a copy okay uh, please bear with me the internet so they will bring you to this uh this name this so all this name list is customizable just bear in mind do not change the name and photo any cut any any cells that uh color with blue do not adjust that you can delete all the name and then insert your class name say i have all these students so i copy and paste photo is for you to post a photo that already available online let's say you need to copy the url mm -hmm. right so after you've done this i i think to keep it simple you no need to paste their photo here sorry can someone mute the mic okay so i uh, go on to the file under file here click on publish to the web this is the important step after you key in your student name click publish to the web and click publish and then they will ask you whether you want to publish this section then you say okay so don't worry about this you don't need to change anything you close it and go to this step so can you see my mouse go to this step then they will generate a url for you when you click on the urls so this is the name of my student and you ask me the name is so long the uh, they can't fit the names don't worry you just spin it after you spin it they will display the full name for you so let's say you have an activity so you want uh, Shazani to answer the question sorry my students call out for my shout out for my students are using all your name here all right so this one is totally random so sometimes you're going to not uh, pick a same student multiple times so you can go to single name this is to make sure whoever picked by you is not, not going to uh, being picked again you can form group of uh, you can form group of two group of three and how many team and so on it's actually facilitates your make your uh, organizations easier when you're doing online uh, activities there's more function here you can actually do the uh, the gift exchange and so on but i'm not going to go there but I want to introduce you a few games here. So uh, before I go further to, to uh, the, an, another, the, another the gamifications, any questions, Sarah? Any questions? Uh, oh, I think we can open questions to our uh, audience if they want to ask any questions through your mics. Okay, if, if not, I will continue the sharing because I have few more. Maybe we compile the questions at the end sure. of this rapidity. All right. Yep. Okay, so next uh, is scavengers, uh, hands. You, how is going to, okay, I, I demo it for you. So it's like this, when you, when you can ask questions, ask the students, so you can create questions, they need to unlock uh, all these they need to unlock the locks so for example you can customize all these questions uh, for your subject for example if i teach immunology i'm going to ask immune questions so here's what has the key but what has the keys but no lock space but no rooms and so on perhaps it's keyboard so it's correct if the student cannot answer they can click on hint so they'll give a clue Okay, so they can unlock everything. And then once a student unlock all the, all the locks, they will send an email to you to tell you which students use what, how many uh, durations to complete the task. 
So without further ado, let me introduce you how to do this. A quick one, I'll random pick few. This is a very good gamification, online gamification tools. Huh? So you can create again, create on templates and create, make a copy. So here is all the questions. So here they have few sections. Uh, they ask you questions and then ask for hints and the answer. You can replace everything except the one in blue color. Do not change anything. So again, you can change here. But just now, we, I used a question just now. Uh, if you want to use images as a hinting uh, your, your cruise, remember you need to type this image dot dot. You need to include this. You can't just paste the URL. You need to include this and the these sections. So I already prepared some question for my class. So this is the questions. So you can prepare like this: the questions, the answer, the hint. Remember, this is compulsory. If you want to insert an image, this you need to put a bracket, double bracket, image dot uh, columns, and double bracket at the end. Okay. So now I have all the questions and all the answers. I just copy them and I delete all this. And I paste. After that, don't go to uh, get the link yet. Go to the options. Here's whether you want your answer to be case sensitive. Sequential means student can answer random London, click on random lock and answer it, or they need to follow the sequence. So if you click the drop down list, yes means they need to follow first lock to second lock and so on. No means they can random answer any locks. Final means before the last lock, every lock can be random, but the final will only review after they answer all the lock. Okay, here email address is the, the website after the student complete the answer, they email a report to you. So you can type in the emails. And then here you can customize uh, if they, they, they're done, you can, you can what, what kind of uh, text appear. After you've done the option, don't forget to go to files, file here, go to publish to the web. Create the green button and create the blue buttons. After that, don't worry about this. Close it and get the link here. So you're clicking the, the share the link to your student through Google Meet or what. Students need to answer, put, put down their name. So this is the questions I make. So monosai, blah, 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 blah. So they can create for crew. So, so they know the answer um, with the crew. Maybe they believe it's macrophage. Or maybe, yeah, so correct like this. So after they've done everything, they'll send a report, a particular student uh, use, using how many times. But remember, you want to release this at the same time for your student. You can remember to create a uh, randomized. So each student have different sequence. So this is actually to increase the fairness when they do the game. Flippidity have a lot of things that I can share with you, like hangmans, all the bingos and so on. There are many, many games, but I believe it's, you can explore yourself. It's quite uh, straightforward, uh, straightforward. Anything, you can go to the template and they will tell you what to do. Okay? So, done with Flippidity. Okay, today's the... I save the best for the last is pure dex. Huh? Pure dex is the best so far. Okay, before I go to pure dex, I open sections for questions. Okay, I have uh, saved a few questions here, um, but um, I, I think after this, uh, I'll uh, um, let the audience uh, take the the mics. So uh, back on the Google Meet just now. Uh, do the students or and guests also have the recording feature like the one that we have here in Zoom? Mm, if they're under the 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 premium account, yes. Okay, 
and just to make sure that we um, uh, G Suites is supported by with a UPM email address. Yeah, I mean those who are, who have an UPM email account will have uh, access to this Google Meet Hangouts and everything. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And there's a question about uh, um, the security of these Google Chrome extensions, especially read and write, because I think when you try to download it, when you try to install it, uh, it will ask you to uh, to read every data in 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 your websites. Your your crew, remember you need to type this image dot dot. You need yes, yes. to if I mentioned use the URL. You need to yes, include this and the these sections. Yeah, so I I'm already prepared some question for my class. Sorry, someone someone re knew uh, the mic. Yeah. I'm trying okay. to who's asking. All right. So uh okay, so to answer your questions, the safety of Google Chrome extensions, uh, some Google Chrome extensions are not safe. So Google Chrome's uh Google are uh, actively screening their Google Chrome extensions. So Last few days, there's a news. Uh, Google published few uh, listings of uh, extension that have been removed by them. Um, okay, so for read and write, anything that going to send file to your Google Drive need permissions. So when you install them, they since you want to send the vocabulary vocabulary comparisons to your Google Drive. So for sure, they will prompt you a message. So don't worry about that. Um, but however, there are many, many extensions are not safe. So, but all these are after uh, check with, you know, shared by all the educators. And this is one of the few that are, are trustable. Okay, can we move to the last one? Okay, so, um, Again, uh, today's webinar is about um, uh, how to use Google Zooms, eh, Google Meet, sorry, Google Meet, and also uh, Web Tools and also Chrome extensions. So I, I'm being because I want to enhance your uh, online teaching and learning activities. So I want to share another web tool called Perdex. Um, this is. This is one of the tools that I enjoy so much. Again, you can join Peerdex and click go to peerdex.com. So let me allow me to close others. Okay. So under Peerdex, so you can click on teacher login and login with your Google Classroom or uh, all your UPM accounts. So because I already logged in before, they did not ask about my institute's info. So if you are the first timer, you need to key in the address of UPM and then allow them. Again, this is going to send file to your Google Drive. So they will ask your permissions. Okay, why I want to introduce a product with you because in, uh, with combination uh, with Google Meet, it's going to be a very, very interactive uh, presentation and online TNL. So I only want things when I'm doing a presentation. If I do a presentation, student might mute my, they are actually attending the Google Meet, but they are not necessarily paying attention. So PureDex is one of the tools that you can from time to time do activities with them. So I would like to share with you the example, and this will be the last web tools I'm going to introduce you uh, because we, we, are, we are about times. So please allow me to share one more. All right, okay. so Prodex is free. There's so many options for free accounts, but premium account have more. So you have like about, uh, uh, let me close this one. Okay, so per decks, they will link to your Google Slides. So let's say I have a, uh, I have this, I can import my slide. Uh, I import, uh, import the slide that I already met before, let's say chapter six of my subjects. So they will load it onto the Google Slides. Okay, so once they load loaded onto Google Slides, they will let you pick which slide that you want 
to incorporate into this current slide. If you want to in, import everything, then you highlight everything for me. Perhaps I highlight a few only for the, so, so I import the slide. So just be patient. The interesting features here uh, will inter introduce you. So in certain slides, for example, you want your students listening to your presentation and then interact with you. For example, I want my student to draw on, on my presentation. So I perhaps I type the question, what is the killing mechanisms? Uh, sorry, I'm at teaching uh, immunologists uh, of, so the question is uh, telemed for my course. So click on add-ons, click on pure DAX for Google Slide. Then they will recall the function of pure DAX. And there's a few things here. You click on draw because I want my student to draw on this slide when I present. So when the student listening to my presentation, they can actually draw, draw and then I can compile all the results later. So here, there's a small, uh, uh, small banner appear. Do not delete it, okay? So just let it there, okay? It won't affect your presentation output later. It's just to tell you this slide has certain functionalities. Okay, I, before I show you the result, I would like to tell you more before I move on. So let's say here, this is another slide that I want my student to I want my student to do activity with me. I want to make sure they are in front of the monitor listening to my presentation. So I need to click, click on draggables. Draggables is for student to drop a pin, drop drop certain things. So let's say I want student to pin which organ, which organ is uh, lymphoid organs, which organ is what organs like that. I can change the color. I can change the size of the frag. You can see here, uh, when I move the slider, the frag will increase in slide and I update the slide. So later on, uh, when I present the slide, the students are able to, to drop the, the, the pins uh, when I ask them questions. So this is a class activity, an interactive class activity that you can, can engage. So let me find a question so that I can, uh, I already typed the questions here. So to save time. So I want them to, sorry about that. Okay, so I ask the questions. Uh, so ask them to put the red flags and so on. So, so later on when I present this slide, student can play with the slide, okay? So there are more, you can do um, multiple choice, you can ask the opinions, but for, for, the, for the available, available templates under here, there's so many things you can cho uh, choose beginning of the lessons and during the lesson and end of lessons. Say I pick during the lessons, I pick this one, true and false. You pick, you can, there's so many templates you can customize. Uh, for your class. So you, when you create, they automatically class, uh, create a, 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 a patch here. So let's, you, let's say you want to ask them a certain questions. Let's say I want to ask macrophage is an innate immune cell. Is this statement true or false? You just feel free to change it. Okay. So later on, students can drag their curse, cursor and pick, uh, they can pick the multiple questions here. So uh, many things, you can ask a student to summarize, you can ask a student to draw, you can ask the student to take a break and so on. Say, I want the students to summarize what they learned. I can click on this template library. If, if you, are, you do not want to create your own like me. So okay, now I want to share with you the results. Go to start lessons on the right. So they will, they'll ask you whether it's synchronous or asynchronous. So if I'm doing a Google Meet with my student, I want to choose the right one. 
if I want to share only the links and let the student to explore themselves and then I get the results on the spreadsheet later, I pick the left one. So if I want real times interactions, I presenting the slide, the student interact with me, then I pick the instructor's you know, pace. So when you click that one, they'll bring you to a new tab. On this tab, they'll share with you the codes. You share the student this, this code, the student go to joinpd.com ZTWUU, or else you can give the student a link. So for example, I open, I open a browser. Let's say I'm a student. This windows, let's say this is a student with no students need to log in. So I have a dummy account. So uh, I log in. So when students log in, what they see here is the first question that they will ask whether how happy is, what's the mood of the students is actually ice breaking. So the student can skip or maybe they're okay. They feel mm, neutral. So they're loading the presentation, they're waiting for the, 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 the lecture to start the presenting. So here I can see two students already joined my class. I can start my class if the number is okay. Dr. Chong, can we entertain some questions from YouTube Live? Uh, yes, but can we, can, can let me complete this and then I open the Q&A? No worries. <laughs> I thought you want to say no. Okay, so uh, you can present the slide but until you move to the page where you insert, insert the functions. So uh, right now, don't worry, it's loading. Okay, so this slide, uh, just now I asked my student to draw. So what I see here, student draw somewhere on the slide. This is what appear on the teacher screen, the lecture screen. On the student screen, they can see here, loading is like this. They ask them to load the canvas, they have all the drawing tools they can use, and then they can start to draw. So let's say they, I ask them to uh, draw killing mechanisms. So they can just draw, oh, sorry. So, sorry, let me, let me clear this. So I quickly draw. So student can interact with you while you are presenting. So, uh, so let's say it's a granular side and uh, sorry about the, so the, the, these things, okay. So I do a simple one. This is what students on student screen, they can interact with you. And for your screens, there's nothing here. You can create on, sorry about that, let me move this. You create show response. Then you can see few options on the, follow my cursors onto the top left, the list layout where you can see all your students, how they respond. So you can see their name and uh, what's their response, or you can click on grid layout to, to see, uh, let's say you have like 50 students, this is the better one, and then you can point to a specific one and then discuss. All right, overrate is something that I not recommend for certain question because they'll overrate all the answer of all your students onto one page. So uh, list layout will be the good one. You can, can interact with them. So I would like to go further to the next questions. So next question is uh, draggables. I want my student to drag the red flags and the blue flags onto some things. So on my student screen, they can, there's red and blue flag appear. This is customizable. You can set to pin, you can set to, 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 to star or love and up to you. So they can actually drag it. So it's, it's, uh, this is for fish immunologists. Huh? So, but you can customize for your course. Uh, use your, uh, feel free to, to do uh, engage with your students. So again, there's nothing here before you're clicking on show response. When you click show response, you can see that student already point all the facts because on the overrated layout, everything's here. But if you click, uh, click on list layout, you can see one by one, uh, what's the, how they are response, whether correct or not, you discuss them. So uh, let me go to the two, like true or, true or false, also the same things when you, what appear on student screen is the questions. Sorry, it's loading. Huh? 
so they can pick the answer here true or false so you can you can check your student understandings from time to time and you can give a merit merit and star points immediately at the same time you can understand that which students are actually still engaging with you so let me back here so on top of that drawing right or wrong and true or false another options will be writing the short answer okay so they can let's say yes. okay so they can type an uh, answer here they can type a short essay and then you can correct the response so okay so and then you can end your presentation and please name your let's say this is my course aku 452 chapter 5 I'm sorry, chapter six. Then I save and end. Okay, and then return to Google Slide. So where can you retrieve all the results? Okay, before that, let me show you. Once you end, the student can give you feedbacks. Huh? So you can know whether the student understand or not. So when you're done with your presentations, the Google Dex homepage will ask you, uh, you already, uh, you have recently started a lesson. You go to open dashboards. So they will show you all the summary and the interactions you have. And all the student answers, show how to answer what and my dummy account and so on. They can compile this. And then you can export the spreadsheet to your Google Drive. So we can export all the answers and to, for you to give them formatic mark, marks and so on. Okay, so it's take, taking times. But I would like to tell you for those drawing and draggables, they only can give you good coordinates, the positions of the slides in terms of X, Y coordinate. But if they are writing short essay, uh, you can retrieve them nicely. If not, you can need to open back on your dashboard to see where is their frags and their, 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 their drawings and so on. Okay, with that, uh, and my web tools. So, yep. So there are uh, quite a few questions on Paradigm. It seems like it's an it's a really interesting ex extension. But right. um, for example, if the students want to join in or use Paradigm in uh, um, in class, for example, do they have to use their own UPM email or no? They can use any account. Oh, they can use an account. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, for example, if uh, let's say the student answers questions, so do they have their names on there? Yes. If provided their accounts, mm -hmm. they, they will display their email's name. If they register a random dummy email, for example, just now I use Fish Farmer ABC, then the name is going to be Fish Farmer ABC. So I you see. want to. You want to identify them you need to say okay to uh if you use those like you know student like turn to use a funny email name you need to clarify with them which is who is whose yeah all right so for those questions uh, uh that are asking whether um pair that can be used um by students without upm email yes they can use that but um they still need their actual names for you to be able to assess them later on um, regarding the slides, yeah, I have a few questions here about um, the, 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 the presentation slides. Will Paradeck change my original slide as well? And how do I share my students' answer during the lecture? As I, as I, I think uh, they're, they're typing the questions while I'm presenting. You can export the spreadsheets or you can always go to your dashboard and display all the answers at the same time. All right. Okay. And we, we can save the PowerPoint slides with all the students' response, yeah? Yes. Uh, however, um, okay, let's tell, will they change your slide? The answer is uh, you are importing them on pure Dex. So you wouldn't affect on your desktop. Uh, you will affect on your uh, pure Dex uh, dashboard, all the library there. Uh, but pure Dex can be used on Google Drive, Google Slide, and also uh, Microsoft uh, PowerPoint online. Okay, for Google Slide will be add-on. 
you need to go to add-on and call the peer deck out. For Google, uh, for, for PowerPoint online is add-in. You can go to add-in and call the peer deck out. So if you create your slide using PowerPoint, you import them to Google slide, they might have some margins and formatting changes of very minor uh, vice versa. There is, uh, yeah, I missed a few, sorry, I missed a, uh, two important questions here. Uh, they were asking about the extension, like the not extension, read and write. Um, uh, does, do the students have to also download the extension on their, um, uh, on their machine? For yes. example, Pear Deck, not ex extension, read and write? Uh, Pear Deck, no. Pear Deck, Pear you just share them the links. Mm -hmm. And then FreeBDT, uh, uh, sorry, uh, FreeBDT, PT is you share them the links also. Uh, no need to download. It's web tools. The the difference between web tools and also extension is extension. You need them to download. Web okay. tools is you can share them the links. I okay, uh, just like uh, very popular like Kahoot is a good web tools, and uh, also uh, those are web tools. You you no need ask them to install anything, uh, unless they're using on their mobile device. Uh, for for extensions, uh, yeah, extension you need them to, to to install. That's why I separate the webinar into the basics one because mm. some educator believe they don't want to taxing the student to install so many things. We respect the decisions, so that's why mm. uh, in the front part I just introduce you the basics tutorials, and then the advanced one is when I start to introduce you how to install that certain extension. And however, I would like to apologize the Google Meet attendance. Uh, I'll check, actually I checked 12 o'clock just now, everything fine. But when working, uh, when, when I'm showing you right now, uh, just now, it's, it's a problem to generate the SLs. But yeah, things have happened on a real time tutorials. But I believe the others, uh, others uh, extensions uh, are quite useful. So hopefully you can learn some some web tools that can make your 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 online learning colorful. Any other questions? Okay, we open to our Zoom audience if you have any questions. And I'm also still waiting um, uh, from YouTube chat room if you have any questions. Hi everyone. Hi. 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 I have Hi, a Yes. I recognize that voice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we recognize her. Regarding the Pear Deck slide, uh, do we need to uh, see if we want to conduct an online lecture? Do we need to uh, do it via Pear Deck or is it uh, need to be linked with Google Meet? Okay. So for Pear Decks, you can't hear their voice. So I, I will, if the bandwidth or the internet accessibility allow, you can actually link with Google Meet so that they can respond with voice and then they can play with their screens. But however, it can work independently with Google Meet. So uh, that's why um, today's title it will be Google Meet and also Chrome extensions. So it's two different things, but they actually can complement each other. All right, thank you, Chow. Thank you, Kazu. Right, any questions? Any questions? By the way, what time are we supposed to end? I think we can, we are exit the times now. So oh, maybe... Uh... Okay. No, yeah. <laughs> we have like 400 watching on YouTube live right now. And I oh, think, thanks. yeah. So so uh, before before we pass to you and Dr. Wan, I would like to apologize okay. for all the mistakes uh, or any mistake. I, I try my best to share, but with all the conditions, I can't control certain things that the Google Meet attendance just now. So I would like to apologize. And maybe there's some question I I do not know the real answer, but uh, but you can you can can get the answers uh, <coughs> easily by asking around or Google. So uh, I try my best and share what I know. So I would like to apologize if I have met, met any I have made any mistakes. Right? Nice, okay. So, so okay. all right. Um, yeah, is it right? Uh, so we, I, I hope after this, uh, our participants are waiting because we have also uh, to show you also the